What drew you to Vipassana? I had a a good friend of mine tell me about it, and he was just explaining his experience with it and what he gained from it. And I was um, just in a real miserable place. I was taking a ton of different medications at the time and just feeling awful and really wanted to find a better way, something that would hopefully work out for me. You know, I was down to try like anything really. And that it sounded like extreme and like really weird to me at the time, but also, you know, I was already just kind of like in an extreme weird place in my head anyway. (laughs) <laughs> and I've done the Vipassa meditation too, the, mm-hmm. the 10 day retreat. And they usually screen people out if they've had some sort of mental stress or disorder of some kind. Right. Um, did you just lie on the form or did they have, did, they didn't have that where you were? I told them the truth. And then I had to go through this like extra process where they, um, they required a letter from my psychiatrist and I, they may have even had a phone call with him as well. I'm not sure, but they did do a, a check with my psychiatrist and to like, mm. be like, how is he doing type, type stuff? Do you feel like he would be able to handle something like this? And so they, they do an extra check and then they put you on a little red flag list. Like if that guy starts acting weird, <laughs> he's got to go. <laughs> he's gotta go you gotta go sorry man you're crazy it's sorry dude it's, it's not yeah. buddha <laughs> only what no. sorry yeah. go ahead but... but you had what kind of experience did you have your first time around because just for people who don't know it's 10 straight days 10 hours of meditation a day very limited vegetarian diet and they are strict it was super tough at first like i wanted to leave I think on day three, I was already just like, Mm. this is, I couldn't get into the first meditation into Anapana, the, the first meditation they teach you. And do you recall that? The breath going in, in and out through the nose, right? The breath going in and out through the nose. Right, right. You just focused on what they call the nose box, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I, but my first three days. I didn't have a single second of staying with my breath. My mind was just going Mm. everywhere. And I was just sitting there for 10 hours, losing my mind. (laughs) Just be like, what am I doing here? And I can't do it. Apparently I can't do this damn thing, you know? And then it finally started clicking or I had an experience with it on day four. And then I just stuck with it. But I did have a really hard time at first, even just, uh, getting into the first meditation they they teach you, mm-hmm. so I felt like scared and frustrated, and like I'm I'm out, dude, like <laughs> right away. <laughs> yeah. And then what happened on day four that shifted things? I went into just the the stillness of mind, and was observing my breath, and I I wasn't having thoughts. I was just in that that quiet state of observation. And then my, I'm not sure how long I was in there for, but it felt amazing. Or when I, when my mind started going again, then shortly after I was like, wow, I just had like a real moment of just quiet and just observing something. It was neat. Mm -hmm. And And that's pretty much on that retreat. That's, it's the, what's his name? Gwenka. Yeah. And his videos and that essay Gwenka, something like that. Yeah. S.N. Gwenka. Yeah. Sanguenka. And they say, they say, look, you're going to meditate for about three days and your mind is going to slowly slow down. And on the fourth day, they say that have a no mind state. They really say say that. I wasn't even paying attention. You You weren't watching the video. I guess not. Or I I probably, (laughs) geez, man. Yeah, no. And I was really weirded out by that experience too. Just the whole thing I thought was really weird at first the watching the discourse at night on the tv and the the oh, dudes okay. in the weird clothes just no one talking the whole thing i was like this is a death cult dude <laughs> i'm getting and i don't know like, i don't know if you noticed but 
in those videos <laughs> and, and in the tapes, because they play tapes from Gwenk in the morning, right? And right. you hear from this guy Gwenk every now and then. But he's he's telling you, you know, things like, you know, focus on your breathing, inhale, exhale. And then you'll hear this. <coughs> There's this coughing on the recordings. All the recordings have this coughing. Right. And, and then you see the video and it's his wife sitting next to him. And she's just Who's not saying away anything. Yeah. No, know. she's not saying anything. She's just there hacking away, ruining all his recordings. It's priceless. It's, it's That's really so funny. funny, dude. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So you got into it. You saw the benefit. You didn't have any like really difficult experience after that. You settled in and, and it was beneficial. Did it, was it just like a happy ending for the rest of the retreat? No, I mean, I was, yeah, once I started getting into the meditation, it starts bringing things up. I'm sure you experienced it. Like you get into a mm -hmm. way more into your emotions and past experiences and man, no, I got really, really emotional. I was going from depressed and crying to laughing to angry, wanting to scream, you know, just the whole thing. Like I felt really, really crazy for the majority of the time I was there, it wasn't until I think it was the seventh day that I had, I think it may have been a Kundalini experience, but it was, oh, mm -hmm. it was hard for me to discern if it was a Kundalini experience or if it was the Bunga experience that they speak about. Do you recall that? Bunga is. No. Bunga, dude. <laughs> it's the, uh, what happens there? I became more of the aware of just the energy body or just the energy within me. Mm -hmm. And then there was just mm -hmm. kind of this blending where I felt like I, I kind of moved into all the space around me where I, I really did just sort of turn into energy for a minute and lose the body and feel this really pleasant electricity, which is really similar to the Kundalini. But so I'm not sure yeah. what really happened. But it was, yeah. it was really nice. <laughs> okay. And, it, and then it after like that. like one type of Kundalini experience you had. Okay, you yeah. The experience was just like a really pleasant one. And then after that in meditation, I experienced a lot of letting go of, I guess, just a lot of pain that I was holding. And like painful perspective, mm -hmm. a lot of self-hatred. That definitely came up during that experience, just how much I, I was holding hatred towards me came up and I felt like a, like a forgiving of myself for that and realizing that hate was, you know, stupid. It was a, a pretty deep perspective change that I, I almost felt like physically lighter after that happened. Wow. Yeah. So it was, it was really yeah. good for me, man. But, and with everything that you went through, which sounds extraordinarily intense, you never went into mania. You never had like a bipolar or relapse in this retreat, um, at least in this first one. No, I mean, it really did feel like, I mean, there was days where I was definitely manic. I mean, I was sitting there oh, yeah. talking to myself in like a different accent doing anything I could to like, you know, keep myself, the silence was maddening. That was really tough for like the first half of it, but I was totally going, I felt like in and out of mania, having all sorts of crazy thoughts about how the universe works and all sorts of stuff in a very like uh, high space and then a very, very low, you know, but definitely doing the bipolar cruise, but I was just silent. Okay. So no one could probably tell. <laughs> yeah. It's you know. pretty hard to be quiet and manic at the same time. You know, right. I was silence. probably teetering. If I was fully manic, I don't think I would have stayed quiet. You know, I was probably in like a hypo uh -huh. hypo mania, you know, but you were still, even though you were kind of teetering, you were working through some deep processes that you found yeah. very important, very healing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and I had a similar experience, you know, when I did the Vipassana retreat. On the fourth day, I went into a full Kundalini process. Far um, out. And I was, I was worried that it might go off and I'd get delusional. 
And mm -hmm. so I, I just refused to meditate when I wasn't comfortable. And they got pissed off at me for that because I was just laying in bed every morning and they're knocking on the door. Why aren't you meditating? And I'm like, I'm, I'm afraid of psychosis. I don't you know, want to. And it's Portuguese. Like my Portuguese wasn't very good. It's still not. Oh, you were in Back Brazil. Then, really bad. I was in Brazil, and right. and I'd say, you know, psychosis. I'm afraid of psychosis. And they would just go away and come back and say, you can leave if you want. I'm like, I can't leave. You know, I can't. Like I couldn't get on a bus in the state I was in. You know. Dang yeah. So I just kept rolling with it. It's really interesting that that you went that way. That they accepted you. That you could process a lot. You know, and and then that Phil got interested in you, not through your, so you know your disorder, but through your meditating. Yeah, that is pretty ironic, man. Or I haven't really thought about that, but yeah. 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 yeah.